I don't have a name. I used to have one and a lot of people would like to know what it is. Some call me Chilby and as a name it suffices. I've been called many things. A burglar, a hoodlum, a criminal. I prefer to think of myself as a gentleman thief. Okay, I need to turn this down. Something rewarding in store. My fence, my fence phones me. What? Phones me in the middle of the night and asks if I know. Apparently, the last of the Defoe line has obligingly <laughs> died without heirs, leaving all the family whatevers. Okay. Lawyers have got place locked up tight, of course, but that has never stopped me before. In the place is, of course, deserted. How cinematic. It should be a painless, rewarding evening's entertainment. Alright, welcome to Five Days a Stranger. I know very little about this game. Is my face gray? And the gentleman thief makes his entrance. Use arrow. Do I use cursor? Yes, I use cursor. Alright. Uh. Walk, look, use, talk. Look. A rather dreadful portrait of a woman, early Victorian style, and I notice a wedding band on the finger. This must be the wife of the mansion's first owner. I really need to figure out if I should make him British or Russian. He doesn't seem like a Victorian fixture. Must be an addition made by the most recent tenant. It's an empty grass-fronted cabinet. Kind of books the middle class keep around themselves in order to appear learned. An unstrong 14 steel safe. I can crack these in my sleep. What is. I'm scared. What was that noise? Look, use. What's this? Umbrella? Sure. <laughs> Empty. This the family solicitor got here first. Hmm. Every voice works. I don't like those whispering noises in my ears. Bachelor of Law awarded by Clarence Defoe, the University of Warwick. He's the last owner of the house who recently died, and I think I have just lost whoever, whatever sympathy I had for him. Sure. Okay. It's a door. Use. Oh. Yeah, should have done that in the first place. Oh no, no, stay away from me! Ah! Um, you snuck into a house? Oh, I'll use wearing a burglar mask, okay. Who the heck was that guy? I was under the impression this house was empty. Maybe he's you from an alternate timeline. I have a hunch he may be in here. <laughs> Hmm. Rude. 
why I need it, I'll let you know. I'm not the sort of cat burglar who leaves the taps running out of sheer malevolence. Yeah, I think I'll give them like that 20s detective Lupin the Third-ish type voice. Alright, walk. Walk like a man. No one is one crawling on the earth So walk like a man myself Why the heck do I use the stairs? Do I have to use the hand on it? Yep. Maybe. Oh. Nah. Can I like... Use the keys or something? Because this is very unhandy. Okay. Alright, I'm leaving. Well, that kinda sucks. Yeah, I think we might be boned. It's a rather amateurish landscape. The signature identifies it as the work of Matthew Defoe. Circa 1818. Hmm. Can I interact with it, I wonder? I know some really unscrupulous art dealers, but I doubt even they deserve this. Yeah, right. Hmm. If they draw wires in something, that's usually a sign that that's important. Why does the plug-in go to the other plug-in? Oh, that's another socket. Okay. I'm just nuts. Another news, the society world is still shaken by the sudden death of Sir Clarence Defoe. How topical. Sir Clarence and his wife Julia were found dead last Thursday in Defoe Manor. Our correspondent Peter Daltrey has the report. It was just four weeks ago that this place was a buzz of activity as Sir Clarence Defoe moved in with his new bride, Julia Swanson Defoe. Now, after this shocking tragedy, the place is quiet as the tomb and empty of human life. Oh. He's here, <laughs> for sure. So Clarence had only proven his attachment to Defoe lineage almost one year ago, and since then had been renovating this long abandoned family mansion in preparation for his marriage. The police have already declared the tragedy as a murder suicide, although many have insisted that Sir Clarence was incapable of such an act. The debate rages on while the fate of the house and the family fortunes remain unclear. This is Peter Daughtry, BBC News. Eh, well, you know I picked the right voice. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Our top stories again. Minister. <laughs> I hate television. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'll just make my way up. Ooh, crap. Oops. It's about time you showed up. I don't know what type of voice to give this person. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. I've been stuck in this house for days. Where's the way out? I'm sorry. I just don't understand. You're the guy who owns this place, right? Er, uh, no. Oh. So how'd you get in here? Uh, a window on the second floor. Is it still open? No, oh, no, it's damn shot. If you'll excuse me, I've got to, some work to do. Wait a minute. Yes. Who are you? Oh, I beg your pardon. Hardy's the name. Philip Hardy. Call me Phil, and you are? Trailby. Mr. Trailby, I'm afraid you are now a prisoner. Like me, everyone else in the house. A prisoner? Don't ask me why, but once you get in, the house won't let you leave. 
I've tried all the doors and windows, none of them open. The garden wall's unclimbable, and I can't tunnel under it. But why? Who's keeping us here? Beats the hell out of me. Whoever it is, they will certainly not be safe from my fist once I get out of here. So if there's something you're not telling me now, it would be a good time to get it off your chest. I assure you I am completely mystified. So, how many people are in this place? Only three more. First, there's Jim the youngest. He turned up just after I did. He's a good kid. Second, Simone Taylor. You probably know her off the telly. She's a correspondent for the BBC. She came here to make some kind of documentary, I think. But now she's stuck in here with us. Lastly, there's AJ, skinny bloke with a tache. Tache to what the heck does that mean? I don't know. All I know is that he's been here longer than anyone, nearly a whole week. I think I've already met him. Oh, what a heartwarming story. Anyway, why don't you see if you can track them all down? I'm calling a house meeting in the lounge. Spread the word. I trust you'll enjoy your stay at Defoe Manor, Mr. Truby. I still don't understand. Just find the others and tell them to meet up in the lounge. We can discuss things properly, then. Oh, crap, you've got some shady motor. There's some cult crap going on here. It's been lit recently. Yo, it's lit, dog. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that gun. It's no, I'm no expert on, no expert on guns, but I think that's a late 18th century musket rifle, standard issue of the British Army of that period. A very old sepia photograph of a man in explorer's gear standing over a dead tiger. The label reads, Sir Roderick Tames a Vicious Beast. That gun he's holding looks a lot like the one over the fireplace. <laughs> the antlers wouldn't fit inside my blazer. Well, this thing's heavier than it looks. I'm not carrying this around everywhere. And wait, what now? What did he say? I missed the last thing. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a... I'm a leaf. Wait. Gotta look at the case thing over here. Jeez, my desk just shifted. Scared the crap out of me. Stuffed tiger head. Mounted in the act of snarling, presumably to justify death in some small way. Wait, I know what it's going for. My thinky thoughts are thinking away. Okay, find a place to put it down. I don't want to use that on myself now, do I? Okay. I'm a leaf. I can't figure out this stupid cryptic puzzle. It's a pleasantly professional quality portrait of a bearded man in a Victorian explorer's outfit. A little plaque at the bottom reads, Sir Roderick Defoe. <laughs> Probably bought from Ikea. The tasteless swine. Is it a door or is it a jar? Jam shut. Jam shut. Jam shut. <laughs> there is a perfectly serviceable door. Yay! I'm out. Oh, there's walls, yeah. I'm taking the stick. Not sure what to do with it myself. Show it up your rear end, you fool. Locked. Yeah. Don't any windows open this to a place? No, they don't. Uh, 
Oh, this is where the guy was trying to tunnel out. I thought these were graves. <laughs> Someone's done a real number on this lawn, digging their way out. No, oh, it seems like they were looking for something. Yeah, a way out. <laughs> Very tall, very smooth, very sturdy. You know, if we stand on each other's shoulders, we can get out. Bunch of dingbats in here. I get in the pool. I didn't bring my trunks. Who cares? Swimming trunks are the same as boxer shorts. A large oak tree stands proud beside the house. The branches reaching all the way up to the roof. Roof. Climb on roof. Pushing the tree makes the upper branches sway a little. What fun. What fun. Something happen if I keep doing it. I'm very persistent. You can't put nothing past me. Okay. Well, it looks like I've done everything I knew outside. Nope. Just the underneath of the sink. Wait, what? So we clear out of me, but if I ever need lethal quantities of salt on the to look. Oh, that's what it is. Maybe find something to cook, but I don't. I can't open the freezer section, it's forbidden. Even though that's where all the raw food is, but whatever. I grab the newspaper. You should always keep abreast of day to day events. It's a telephone. Mine's dead. Somehow I was expecting that. Still locked tight. Yeah. It's too bulky to carry around. It's also unsigned and therefore valueless. Man, looks like we just got a bunch of junk up in here, don't we? Whoa. Person. Unless I'm very much mistaken, it's Simone Taylor, television personality. Uh, my gosh, that dog outside really needs to chill out. Pardon me, madame. What? Well, hello. Philip mentioned we had a new guest. Sure, Simone Taylor, right? I should probably give her a reporter voice. Yes, you must have seen me on TV and you are Trumpy. Got a first name? No. Hey, wait a second. Not the cat burglar, Trilby. Oh, wow. I presented a crime watch special on you once. Yeah, I gotta sit around different. Oh, man, I wish I had a camera right now. This could be huge. You wouldn't consent to an interview, would you? Madame, even if you did have a sudden retarding brain injury that would cause me to do so, don't you think our apartment imprisonment, apparent imprisonment, is a slightly more urgent matter? Well, I admit I thought so the first day I was here, but I've been here four days now, and I really don't think I'm learning a lot about this place. If, if I think I could just get these infernal doors open, Philip's calling a business. I'm calling a house. Me, he was. I can't keep up with this crap. Yes, it's like I'll see you later, Mr. Okay, good for you. I'll see you later tonight at eleven. <laughs> okay, strange woman. Oh, them darn dings. Shouldn't think there's much underneath. Well, it doesn't hurt to check. A very understated mirror. Maybe it's a medicine cabinet. 
I really could do with a haircut. Just waiting for that one, like, pure horror moment to jump out of me. Can I, like, save? Wait, what? What? Save as. Ooh. Okay, I messed that one up. <laughs> okay, back now, back now. Slow down, Bessie. Take it easy, girl. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the grappling hook. I mean, don't look like an umbrella. Well, how deceptive of you. Hey, who sang hey? Somebody spoke in the tree, maybe if I talk to it. Is there someone up in the tree? Yep. Alright. Oh hi. You knew you can see a tree. No, apparently I'm a prisoner now too. I'm guessing you must be Jim. What were you doing in the tree? I thought I might be able to get over the wall, but the tree is too far, and there's this ravine just outside the wall, too. So I understand, yes. Philip wants us to meet up in the lounge. Okay, I'll head there now, then. Where would everybody else be? Ah, a new arrival has graced us with his presence. I expect there's a lot you want to know. Join the club. Jay's probably still missing. Guarantee it. What noise? I don't hear nothing. Oh, crap. Yay! I don't have to remember what their voices are. Uh. Knew it. Stay back, I'm warning you. Who are you? Your worst nightmare. <laughs> oh, it's only a dream. That sucks. Christ, I've never dreamt so vividly before. It was so disturbing. Man, I thought I was going to pull like a Resident Evil and murder off all the characters you like. I didn't like them. Greetings, child. Jim can't be older than 16 as he's wearing some mutation of a school uniform. Wait, if he had a horrible dream, he's probably had the same one as me, which means there's something about it. The spoopy place is giving us the same dream. The history of the full lineage. Mm. Okay. Got time to write up on the Defoe family. Okay. So I've done everything I can. It won't. It's a person. Hey, Miss Taylor. Uh, hello, Mr. Trilby. You're really close to my face. <laughs> Sleep well? Not really. Terrible dream. Someone had killed you and Philip and Jim. Took off the mask and he looked exactly like you. No. Actually, he looked exactly like you. What does it mean? Frankly, I don't want to know. <laughs> Do you know about AJ? Not much. Refuse to ask anything about himself. 
giving his full name. Kind of suspicious, isn't it? Don't you think he had some kind of agenda? Yeah, I bet AJ's the big fat jerk that's doing all this crap. How are you holding that? See you later, you big jerk. Just being concerned for your safety, and you say, Dude, you go away, freak. Basically. Lock it. Lock it. Here we just bust out a window. There he is. Looks like a golf club, but I want to say he's holding a hoe. I'm not certain, though. Four. Hey, Mr. Hardy. Well, look who's up. Doing with that metal detector. It's actually part of the plan to get out of here. Let's see, you heard there's some kind of family tomb buried underneath the grounds. Might be another way to the surface. I presume any family valuables would be an expected bonus. Okay. Alright, one of these days, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> but my standards, that's a normal size couch, you little midget. Oh, I forgot to look at these papers I got. Wait. History of Defoe Family, Volume 7, I think it's on. Roderick Defoe, most famous of the lineage. Son had named Matthew. When he finally did start taking on interest in his son, he was known to be bitterly disappointed as his son rejected the idea of joining the army, preferring to pursue art and literature. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. When Roderick disappeared, his servant found bloodstains in one of the rooms where no bodies were found. Okay, how about this, um... Let's see, so Clarence Defoe, last of the long running Defoe line, was found dead yesterday in his home. Defoe 24 was found hanging from a tree in the front yard of Defoe Manor. The recent bride, Julia Swanson Defoe, was also found dead in the mansion, apparently stabbed to death. And Mr. Henry said Defoe killed his wife and then himself. We apparently disproved the possibility of a third party. He would never have committed such an act, plus there was no suicide note. Crap. No suicide note? He knows him. Hey, TV. Our top story this morning. Police are still baffled by the apparent disappearance of television personality Simone Taylor. Hey, they know this one, you know. So far, I've found no way to get inside. The Faux family solicitor, Michael Shisam, is the only key to the building and is currently unavailable. Break the windows! <laughs> the appearance of a local youth from a nearby boarding school. Simply add to this legend surrounding the mysterious Defoe Manor. Reports. Miss Tyler, oh, hello, Mr. Trilby. Do you know where the others are? Um, we're not gonna talk about the fact that they know that they're there. Hmm? Save. Alright. I'm going to consult a walkthrough. It does appear that there was something back up in the library. He said there's a plan in the library hidden amongst the yellow books. What the freak am I supposed to find something like that? I thought I clicked on all of them. Okay, yellow books. Map is always handy. Uh, of course. <sighs> That's a very old architectural plan of Defoe Manor. Uh, it almost looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint. Hmm. The underground tomb clearly marked or something missing. No, it's not that. There's something here that doesn't belong. Okay, second floor. Two, three, four. Okay, that's all fine. Oh. He's looking in the wrong yard. He's supposed to look in the front yard, not the backyard. Crap. <laughs> no, it's the other set of staircases. Where the heck are those at? Oh, 
gonna get to the bottom of this. Okay, so... Let's see, a set of staircases over here. Okay, ding that. Use stick. Hey, Mr. Hardy, I found this old map in the library. Did you? Take a look. The tomb is quite clearly under the front yard. But this is the backyard. There's no way into the front yard. <laughs> Sucks, doesn't it? Well, I guess that's my escape plan. Out the window. Thanks a bunch, buddy. Don't mention it. Can I borrow the metal detector? Oh, why the hell not? Take away my hopes. Might as well take m my only worldly possession, too. Have fun with it. Thanks. Now, excuse me. <laughs> All right. Detector. I guess it's my goal to follow this pipe. I can track where the pipeline leads with the metal detector. The trail ends here. And what have we here? Flip's laborings must have covered it up. Hmm. I don't know. Is that a sprinkler? It's a small metal panel with a single unmarked red button. Push the button. Well, that doesn't seem to do anything. Hmm. I bet. I'm gonna walk around and see if there's anything. It's certainly something. Oh, well, I think we know where our friend is. Yeah. Definitely the man I met on the landing, presumably AJ. Someone tied him to an iron hook at the bottom of the pool. And I think he was dead before then. There's been slit open by some large edged weapon. Sheesh. Dead? <laughs> Murdered. He was stabbed to death and tied to the bottom of the pool. Oh my god. Do you know what this means, don't you? We are the only, only ones in this house. The killer has to be one of us. Not necessarily. I don't think any of us could engineer. Shut up. It was you, wasn't it? You killed it, but now you're covering your tracks. You're being absurd, Philip. Why would Trilby tell us where the body is if you wanted to hide it? He's covering his tracks. He was the last to arrive. Don't tell me you're a bit sus not a bit suspicious of him. As far as I'm concerned, there's no one I can trust any more. But it's none of you. From now on, it's every man for themselves. But nothing other than a supernatural could have engineered this situation. This has such a bad history. A history that some can start looking into what you think they already want. It is a dust type mirror since Robertson. We still make it even upstairs. I don't give a look for him. Father? <laughs> what are you doing, Father? For what? Father, no. No, don't. Father. Father. Father, father! <laughs> Where's all the mites, father? Uh. Oh, freak. <laughs> all that crap. Day three. Wow, that's great. So 
sorry, Mr. Trophy. You wanted me to wake you? Did I? You remember yesterday? You told me about AJ and you said you were going to look into the house and then you asked me to wake you this morning so you could get started? Yes, I remember. Thank you, Jim. Anytime. What does this jerk have to say? Hello, Philip. Leave me alone, cat burglar. Seen the others? No. All I know is that they're not here bothering me. Which means they're dead. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Oh, your business. Those maps of the house? Uh, yes, they're maps. I'm going to find the way out and then I'm going to get away from this mad house. Oh, I didn't know that's supposed to be a pinstripe suit I'm wearing. Apparently it is. It's just peaches, now go away. I'll catch you later. Okay. I'm gonna open this door. So there's any like a crowbar or something. Whoa. I just found it out here like this. <laughs> know whose it is? Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> Did you bring here last night or something? Of course not. It was never in the front yard, and there's no way in the f into the front yard. Or is there? <laughs> Someone's trying to help us, maybe. I'll go and find the others and let them know about it, sure. Um... Cool. Falling out of my pocket, I was getting out of the car. Hide an emergency pick in the, the lining of my tie, just like I usually do. <laughs> oh, I can't open the boot. Well... Oh, I have a remedy for that. Use the pick. There we go. Alright. Kachunk. Aha. Whatever this is. Pickaxe, I think. Is that a saw? I don't know. See what do I have in here? Look. Okay, I can use a pickaxe. I can put a pickaxe in my code, but I can put a musket in my code. Logic. Polish <laughs> old two man saw. I can put a two man saw in my code also. Well, the logic is astounding. Wait, I know exactly what to do. Use da on the wall. Knock, knock. Nope, knew it. Okay, I'm gonna save. <laughs> Cause this, this seems dangerous. What in the world is that? And this music is loud. These man manacles? It says a torture dungeon. What the heck are manacles? You mean like the shackle things? So they had a hidden dungeon. Okay. Gotcha. Oh. You're in here. Oh, you can tag along. Well, that's crazy. They have a stolen open. Must be a deadbolt on the other side or something. Ah, well that sucks. There we go, I'm locked. Mystery's away! Ooh. 
Something scary when they decorate the whole bedroom in all red. Okay, take the little book. I can turn this volume down on my ears. I can't hear anything other than that. No, nope, music. Since I look over the backyard, this doesn't help me much. I have Sir Roderick Defoe. 1806. I didn't think it was that old. Matthew showed me the painting of the grounds he had created. I worry about the boy. Why can't he have healthier interests like soldiering? The painting was fair, I suppose, but I would rather my child be less weakly. Well, parenting 101, everybody. Put down your child's interests. It is the anniversary of the night I unleashed a horror, a horror which I tonight shall remove from this world. May God forgive me. Are you gonna kill your kid? What's wrong with you? Man. That's the last century. Well, poop, man. So wait, he's with me because I can, so I can use the two-man hand, so... But what does that let me do? I wanna watch the telly. So wait, it's called Five Days of Stranger, and this is day three. Yeah, and I don't have much more. Michael Chesham says to the Defoe estates was found dead this morning in his office. Only well, suicide has already been declared. What is the recent string of deaths and disappearances connected to the mysterious Defoe manor? Murder suicide of Sir Clarence Defoe and his young wife, and most recently the appearance of BBC reporter Simone Taylor. To acquire the key to the film in order to escape the location, the key was only known by Mr. Chesham himself. Your television stars have already came forward to pay tribute to Miss Taylor. It's become increasingly apparent that. disappeared. It tells me there wouldn't even be that much coverage if there wasn't celebrity involved. <laughs> yep. Of course. That's why it always works. If someone goes missing who gives a crap if they're a celebrity. Everybody burst out! Duh! Scramble the search parties, the helicopters, the dogs, everything. Just a normal person is like, well, it's another missing person, you know. That's the way it goes. I guess I haven't speak to what's her name in the pool yet. What are you doing? Friends wallet. He had ID for almost every government agency I can think of. Oh, he's with the feds! <laughs> <laughs> Must have been sent to investigate the house. Some kind of secret mission. Yeah. People keep going disappearing. Yep. Clues and in this. Must have been a pretty big fellow, I think. Armed with a large slashing weapon like a machete. I found a piece of leather. Leather? Like Philip's jacket? No, it wasn't black. Brown leather. Like from an old fashioned blacksmith's apron. Yep. Sir Blacksmith, that's who it was. I just don't figure out where the heck he is and kill him. Wait. Maybe I can get him to help me cut down the tree. Damn, give me a hand with this. Spectacular animation. And then Jim died. <laughs> Why do we cut the tree down, Mr. Joey? I'm not exactly sure. I know it makes me feel better. Perhaps something is going on upstairs. Oh. Okay, so this is the kids' room. Why the heck not? <laughs> I 
Little diary. Hey. I found a new friend. He's behind the door in the kitchen and he doesn't have a name. He likes me to sit and talk to him, but Father gets very angry when he finds me doing this. He's the kid talking to a ghost. There, who the boy behind the door was. He told me there was no boy behind the door and it was just a silly fantasy. My father, the painting I just finished, he said it was quite good, which is the best thing he'd ever said. But he was in the good mood. I asked if he'd go behind the door in the kitchen. He pretended not to hear me. There's no boy behind the door and now this. There's blood all over the kitchen floor. I'll do what I can. Then we can be a family together and be happy. And that's where it ends, except for little ink blotches underneath the text. Alright, enough to have the same idea what's that idea going on here. There's been a ghost in the place. There must be some connection to the dearest parents of Roderick and Matthew Defoe. Was Matthew schizophrenic or something? Did Sir Roderick kill him and, uh, and disappear to avoid the law? I saw that neither of their bodies were ever found. Matthew's pawny. Perhaps I could get to the bottom of this. Maybe there's a book or something in the library that could help me. Uh, I don't know what it would be. Why not? I could certainly do with a laugh. Hmm. Maybe we'll figure out what this book says next time. Alright. See you next time.